So everyone always says, you know, you want to get the best, buy Viberg. I've seen that comment on Reddit a lot. When I complain about, you know, whites and some of these quality control issues you see commonly, I've always kind of heard this concept that, you know, Viberg is the top of the line or, you know, I'm trying to think of the terminology I always hear, but it, it's like the pinnacle. Like I always, like, this is the brand to get if you want the best experience. So went ahead and did it. And I've actually opened these, but I put it back how it was. I wanted to inspect them just to make sure there wasn't any damage. I will give them credit before I get into, I guess, the, the concerning part here. But this unboxing experience is definitely superior to other Pacific Northwest brands. You get this, and you've probably seen this in some of the YouTube videos. The little care guides talk about it. Two sets of laces, that's pretty cool. You know, most brands you just get, well, I don't know, Nick's you just get the leather, but uh, I think White's actually gives you cotton stuff sometimes too, or most pairs at least, uh, not necessarily all pairs. And then you get the, uh, you get a little polishing cloth. It's pretty, pretty thin, nothing too substantial, but it's cool. And then this is pretty neat. You get a little whatever canvas bag full of it. You've probably seen this, but I'll just do it anyway. A little tiny thing of, of Venetian shoe cream. That's cool. I have some. I always have some. It's what I, it's kind of my preferred cream for boots and shoes. It moisturizes without uh, darkening the leather much, if, if at all. Some pairs, it's really slight on a darker leather. You can't really even tell. And then you get boot bags, shoe bags, whatever you want to call them. Uh, like this, none of this other than the laces comes with other brands. So like you literally just get a crappy box. This is a nicer box. Not that it matters too much, but if you keep them, I keep them in the box when I'm not wearing the, or like outside, out, out of season, I guess. Uh, so it's nice to have a good, uh, you know, a good box versus something flimsy, I guess. Nothing I guess is wrong with the whites and Nick's boxes. They're thick, but they're not like high quality like this, but then you don't get a boot bag. You get... Uh, a little bit of paper and this is nicer to not that this matters but this is nicer tissue paper uh, this doesn't really matter especially with the boot bags but I've noticed with whites is they have one thin little piece of tissue paper and then it causes them without boot bags to be hitting each other and it scratched the hell out of the toes of uh, one of my pairs that I bought new from whites and that was pretty disappointing so I'll take this out of the bag and this is another another thing I know this is minor but because they're putting in the plastic it's going to keep it from getting scratched. Obviously, you're going to throw that away after you wear them, but it's just kind of cool to get it that way and then, you know, when you buy them new. So here's the boot. And uh, I don't know. I really, this is the 310, if you're not familiar with the shape and this crazy sprung toe. I really like the NYX 11067 last and just the whole sprung toe look. And this is kind of like one of the more hardcore ultimate sprung toes. Some people have different terms. I've heard the chonk masters or something, but uh, the sprung toe on this is pretty serious. And I wanted to just give it a try. So I love natural Dublin. That's what this is. It actually can look quite different. This looks like the natural Dublin that, uh, who is it? I have a, a leather belt, not in that leather, but uh, i trying to remember the name of the individual who runs this site, but they sell leather goods. And he does a natural Dublin belt and wallets. And I, shoot, my wallet's actually made by them. But this looks like the natural Dublin they sell. This does not look like the natural Dublin of my NYX prospectors. This is more of a browner orange, richer color with a shine. The natural Dublin from NYX, at least on my prospectors, that's all I can go by, is more of a yellow color and it's flat, it's not matte. I mean, even this is not, sorry, it's not shiny, it's, it's matte flat. This is a little bit matte, but it still has a little bit of a shine. This is quite shiny here and I don't know, it's kind of weird how wrinkly it is. Uh, I actually emailed the, the apparel company or whatever I bought it from, the, the Viberg retailer and they said this is kind of normal for this leather. He says he has a pair of this boot, 310, in this leather, and his was, looks the same. Because I was initially thinking, hey, is this not expected? Posted about on it on Reddit, actually. Like, maybe maybe this is a defective. 
but he said it's normal, so whatever. And they, they fit well, which was the concern. Uh, by the way, people say one size down from Brannock. In this case, people are actually right. I'm 11 and a half D. Most of my boots are 11, some E, some D. I have some boots at 11 and a half and even a one pair and 12. I wear like 12 Nikes and they're tight, but that's kind of like the size I want in sneakers. Uh, but a, a 10 and a half, this is a, let me see if I can move this over. Uh, you can see right there, 10 and a half, made in Canada. So that's one of the boots. Let me pull out the other end. Oh, this looks like there's another card. What is this? Stitch down construction. Okay. I don't know. They're kind of fun that they give you that stuff. And then it's going to be the same deal here where another boot bag. We'll just pop this guy out here. And more plastic, obviously. And here's the other boot. This was actually the one really why. The other one, I, you can see it a little bit, but it's not too bad. I actually took some pictures and sent this to the, like I said, the retailer. This is quite wrinkled. I've never seen that kind of wrinkling on a boot before. I kind of think it's, I don't know, not defective, but like, is this, does Viberg do factory seconds? I don't know. I feel like this was like, they didn't last this leather correctly, but you know, I'm not a boot maker. Maybe this natural Dublin is hard to work with. So that, this was the biggest concern I had. It's, you can feel it. It's like rough compared to like, say here, very smooth, all of this. They had to last, or not, I mean, pull this tight. This is really smooth and nice. I had a little bit of texture. I know natural Dublin has a texture, but this seems, kind of extreme. Let me get it closer to the camera. I mean, you can see that. Get in the light so you can really pick it up. That just seems a little overly wrinkled. I'm not too concerned long run because they'll get wrinkled their boot. But like this, like to me, seems expected. This you kind of see. Maybe it's just that the wrinkling other side is strange. I don't love that, but hopefully with time I won't care. And then this is a little bit lame. There's, I don't know how to describe this. It's not, I guess you could almost say it looks like it kind of cracked a little bit. I've seen some of this stuff. It's really hard apparently to last on the 310 because it's such a big toe. But you see a couple little like lines and then there's a ding. The ding is kind of lame, but I'll end up getting a ding on them eventually. Maybe they got that out of the way, but yeah, it's a really nice boot. It's 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 heavy for like a a dress boot. Like it feels more substantial than like an Allen Edmond, but this feels actually similar to I have a pair of Oak Street boot makers. It feels like an Oak Street boot maker boot. I will admit that this stitching on the stitch down is pretty interesting. How whatever the stitches per inch SPI, I think I've heard some of these boot channels on YouTube talk about. Like it's it's really thin, like that's unique, but I mean, otherwise it just feels like a nice made boot. I think there's a little bit of hype going on. And then look at this. To me, that's not ideal because these kind of these stitches sort of overlap, which is very whites like, even with white smaller stitch per inch, st stitches per inch or whatever. But look at this, got like chewed up because of that. You can, like there's chunks of, I don't know. It's not a big deal, but like, this is how it should look. You know, this is like what I would expect. Not, not this chewed up bit. So yeah, apparently, you know, everyone said Viberg is the best. Viberg is the cream of the crop. It's the top of the line, you know, the end of the road. Like you buy Viberg, you get perfection. I don't think so. It's a really nice boot but I wouldn't argue that it's nicer than a, a White's or a NYX. NYX actually, I think, impresses me the most because their fit and finish, really good. It seems like they must be catching, either their boot makers are really good, which is maybe possible, that would be awesome, or they pull stuff. But, you know, NYX, it's like maybe there'll be a little ding 
on the sole or like they have the signs you see these little black marks in the leather that's kind of lame but like it's not that big of a deal but my two pairs of nexus didn't have scratches on the actual upper anywhere uh no real issue stitching was perfect whites you know they have edge dressing on the boot and i don't know the, the top like coating on the the kind of the lip of the the sole or the out the top of the outsole if you will or the i guess it's the midsole it's like the paint or whatever they use is cracking on all of my whites. You know, they're potentially the worst, but I don't know. I, I like these. They do smell amazing. I'll give them that. So the, you know, the unboxing and presentation is definitely 10 out of 10 uh, compared to the other brands. But as far as the boot build, I, to me, they seem pretty much the same and I'm, you know, on par. They're different. See, like, look at this. This is what the toe stitching should look like. Maybe I need to compare them so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I don't think it's nitpicking. I mean, you can literally see the difference. Let me get this in the camera here. Look at this and all that chewed up rubber. And then look at this. That's what it's supposed to look like. So. But anyway, like this stuff I don't care about. These marks in the leather like that. It's a natural product, whatever. But the, I don't know, it's the, the vamp is like really wrinkled up. That's normal, huh? It's normal for Viberg, I guess. This is all totally expected. I know I've seen, you see this all the time in natural Dublin. These, I don't know, tiger stripes. These slight little marks and there's little, little indentation. Even this, I think this is where they were pressing it when they're lasting or something like that. I'm not too worried about that. But like the hardcore wrinkling, it's a little bit weird. And again, this boot's a lot worse. That wrinkling, look at that. It's like a 80 year old man's hand, all those wrinkles. But whatever. I'll lace them up once I'm worn, worn them, though it won't matter anymore. It's still a gorgeous boot. Uh, I know this sprung toe is very divisive or whatever. Some people hate it. I love it. So I think I'll give, was it Brett Viberg? I think this was his baby. Uh, he gets high points for coming up with this last. And I could see myself buying another 310 because this last, I mean, this, I... I get the most excitement when I look at my NYX 11067 boots, those prospectors, because of the sprung toe, and they just look so different than every, all other footwear, all other boots I have. And they just make me happy. And like, this is the same thing. Uh, it's just awesome. And they're comfortable. The sprung toe is, is a generous toe fit. I was really worried about the sizing, but I put them on and it's great. And honestly, even though this is kind of sprung a bit more than even the 1167, people talk about the walking toe or whatever they, how they call this. I thought it'd be weird, but I put them on, kind of took a few steps around the room and it doesn't feel weird at all. It feels good. And there's uh, plenty of room for your feet. Uh, my little toes always get smashed, but I would say this... This last fits me better than 11067 because it's so generous here. So definitely worth the admission for the unfortunate, the little, you know, nuances that I'm maybe nitpicking about. But I feel like you can nitpick when they're charging, you know, $800 for a boot. Like that, these things should all be perfect and they're not, but they're close enough, I guess. I just feel like if people are going to say uh, Alden is hyped and overpriced, People like, you know, that channel that cuts boots in half and criticizing them. And, you know, some of that criticism was fair. Uh, people should be reasonable. With, I don't know if he maybe he hasn't done Viberg yet. Maybe he'll tear Viberg a new asshole. But uh, I just think these would arguably be overpriced, too. Maybe these should be a $700 boot, $650, $700 boot. More in line with the other Pacific Northwest makers and not $800 if they're going to have these issues. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe 700. This overall unboxing experience and the packaging and everything, it is more luxurious. So I'll give them that. But yeah, that's it. I will uh, lace these up and put them on and maybe do my typical little video. I'll have to record some of it later. But uh, so you see my feet and how they look with a pair of pants.
Cheers.